Hi guys, it's Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you today. And today I have an unbox, install, um, temperature, basically a full review of my new CPU cooler, which is the Gamer Storm by Deepcool Maelstrom 240T, which is an all-in-one 240mm liquid CPU cooler. But the fantastic thing about this cooler is the price. Now, I picked this up from eBuyer for $35.99. Yes, that's right, $35.99. Now, you can't even get a really nice performance air cooler for this price. So what I wanted to see is how good is a CPU cooler? Surely there must be some trade-offs. There must be something wrong with it. How can it be, you know, between 50 and 70, 80 pounds cheaper than its competitors? Um, so I'm gonna take you in for a closer look. We'll do the unbox and we'll do the install and all the temperature stuff. So that might be a bit of a long video. So let's get in there and have a look at the product. So here's the box, um, and it's pretty basic, all just in brown. We've got the Gamer Storm, which is part of another range that sort of deep cool do for their gaming range. We've got the Maelstrom, Maelstrom, however it's pronounced, 240T. I think Maelstrom, I think it's something to do with like a Whirlpool or something. I don't know, but yeah, that's his name. Um, and that's all we've really got on the front here. We've got its 120,000 hours that they um, rate it up to as well. So it should last you until you buy a new one. Super silent, although the reviews online do say it's a little bit noisier than what you should expect. But it's £35, so we're not going to complain about that. Easy to install. Well, we'll see that in a minute. Um, Intel and AMD, it pretty, much prefer, it pretty much does all the Intel things up to 2011 and up to the latest um, AMD as well. Um, PWM flank control, it's got a blue LED fan, so I am actually changing the fans. My temperature scores are going to be a little different because I'm using Cossier SP120s, but they're the quiet editions. Um, and then it's got an LED breathing light as well, but we'll see all that in a minute. That's cool, man. LED breathing light on the main, on the main bit the block which is good and then again we've got more stuff written on the side here it's called a bionic led breathing light oh fancy um and on the back here as well we have all the measurements which i'll read off you in a second when we have a look at the cooler so let's have a look inside the box and again it's still pretty basic but it seems to be well packaged in there so let's take all the accessories out first so we have what looks to be a lot of mounting stuff in it ah oh, it's like a multi-bracket Intel, is that a multi one? Yeah, and it says AMD on the side there as well, um, and loads of various bits and bobs. I'm just going to show you on an Intel, I forget, Haswell. Is that 1155? Um, then we have the user manual, which is opens out like that. I prefer books, I hate those things where you have to get the whole thing out, and you're like an idiot. Um, and then we have all these about their tri stellar cases. Well, have you seen these cases? Look at that in the front. That, CPU cooler. That's wicked, isn't it? I mean, I mean the reservoir in the front. Now, what else do we have in here? Oh, what's this? Oh, that's nice. That's a nice touch. Now there is two included fans, but what they give you here, like for example, my Cosia H55, it didn't even come with screws, like to add another fan to it. It's that basic because it's like their minimal fit, the minimum price here. And what you have, you've got a single cable tie but then you have this oh then we've got a fan extension cable as well and this is a four pin pwm splitter block as well i'm not going to need this but that's a really good feature like you don't normally see them adding like this many accessories and extras for something this cool because you can't even get really a high performance air cooler there's not very many on the market for this price now here are the fans now these a blue LED fans, there's two included. Now that's why I'm not putting the fans in, because um, I just can't even deal with it. I thought I might have them for a few days and benchmark it, but honestly, I'm, I'm not about blue and red lights. You know me, I'm all white. That's how I like to go. Um, so what about the fans as well? Yeah, they're rated to 1800 RPM as my Cosia SP um, 120s. They're only rated to 1350 as well, so they'll be a bit quieter. Right, let's get this cooler out. Have a look at it. Box to one side for a second. I've actually got the radio dimensions, radiator dimensions in front of me as well, so that'd be a lot easier. So first we have the block. So this is with the that light lights up blue, not blue, white. That's why I bought it. I wouldn't have bought it if it was blue. I don't care how cheap it is, I just wouldn't have bought it. Um, which is why I haven't bought some other ones before because they've had blue lights on them But that's just my personal preference then you have the free pin um, cable as well And this pumps rated up to 2400 rpm so it might get a little bit noisy at top 
top RPMs, but that's still good. And like they say, 120,000 hour lifetime. Now there's some thermal paste already applied to the back, but again, this is gonna change the benchmark scores on it because I'm gonna remove that and put some thermal grizzly on. So, but either way, this should keep it cool. And as for the processor, I'm using the i5-4690K um, and I'm still probably gonna keep it at 4.5 gigs. I don't think I'm gonna send it any sort of further than that. And then last but not least, you have the nice, Full 240 radiator. So I'm trying not to get that plastic cap off. I've done that before. You get thermal paste bloody everywhere. And as you can see, it's got nice packed fins in there as well. Um, what are the radiator dimensions? It's 274 in length, I think that's the saying, by 120 by 27. So there we go. That's just a quick overview of it, and I'm really impressed with this so far. You know, if, you, if you're into blue LED lights, it's got those with the fans. Um, if you need to get an extra controller because you put in with more fans with it, it's got that. Um, if you need an extra extension cable, it comes with that as well. And it looks like it's got quite a lot of screws in the bag. So um, let's do an installation video. So here we are in for the install, and as you can see, I've got screws everywhere. It's like complete madness. There's slight method to it, but it's complete madness. So what you need is whether you do Intel or AMD. If you do AMD, you have the AMD facing towards the motherboard. If you have Intel, you have Intel facing towards the motherboard. And what it comes with is these screws. You've got different screws per bag, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this on here. Try find. It says a slight little groove there on that screw. Let me get my finger out of the way. Slight little groove. So that little groove you mark up, it tells you which one that you need. This is the one for 115 and etc. And then you'll find that little groove basically just slots in between those two bits there. So you do that like so. And then take that bit. And you just push it on. So there you go. That's ready. And the next bit what you have to do is you have to screw. Don't worry about that little black screw, that's something else. That's for the radiator. And then you have to screw these wings onto the cooler. So I'm going to get this installed to the motherboard and then we'll put the cooler on. Now I've decided to actually use the thermal paste that comes with the cooler. Um, only reason for this is I've actually got the case stood up for now because I can't really get the right angle. So the bracket's gone quite easy. Um, there you can see, let me zoom you out. You can see we've got my radiator in there. Um, only thing I might do is because I was always worried about the limited and air coming in here I'm thinking of having a 140 fan maybe like a notchua pumping air down and I'm gonna flip this one around um, Just so that's the air coming in and the air coming out of both sides. Anyway, that's enough for that So yeah, basically you can let me straighten the camera up And zoom you in because of the way those rubber grommets went on You could technically install this stood up I say you could so what you're going to then need to do is take the four thumb screws, which I should make sure they were within reach because this is going to be a bit of stretching. Just grab your four thumb screws and I just want to get all of the thumb screws on really for the first sort of, so that sort of bit, just put them on a little bit so you can just see I can hold them, oh, almost. I spoke too soon, didn't I? Look at that. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Can you do this in situ? I don't think you can. Obviously you should do this laid flat like normally. Let's just get one. Basically I think what you want to do is just get one started. As soon as you've got one started you're alright. So yeah, get one started. Don't worry about it too much. Then you want to come down. Do the other corner. Get that one started. And with these as well, you probably will just finger tight this whole thing as well. I don't recommend screwdrivers. If you over tighten CPU coolers, you bend your motherboard. There we go. First one's always stressful. Do it on camera is also stressful. And I'm also an idiot. So don't try this at home. Now I want you to try it. I really want you to go out and buy this motherboard. Motherboard, God, I'm an idiot. CPU cooler. I need to get out and buy this. Right, so they're all on. So I'm just going to finger tight those up. Oh, I didn't realise there's a sticker on that as well. Take that horrible bloody sticker off. Okay, I'm going to take that sticker off another time. Yeah, there's a horrible caution 
sticker that I haven't read that I was just going to peel. Okay, so once it's all installed, you can sort of shape your tube in. As you can see, just zooming out, that's quite tight like that. I might flip it around and mount it the other way, but I'm going to leave it like that for now anyway. So I'm just going to get the PC wired back up and let's have a look um, at the lights. So the cooler's all installed. Um, what would I say? How long would it take me? Obviously, if I was to do it on a video, I reckon you could inst install this in five to ten minutes, easy. Maybe fifteen if it, the radiator is a little tricky to install. But um, as to the SP120s, the added fans out there, I'm putting a little bit of air in, but I think I'm gonna have to rethink my air situation or maybe another case. Um, but I did want to show you also the included 120 meter blue LED fans. Thought I would show you those. So you can just have a little look at them and they feel like they're shifting them. Fair amount of air and they're quite quiet. Um, and I do know I had this um, on a performance fan setting as well before I turned it off. So the pump I can hear just slightly. You hear it when it powers up. It's a bit noisy. It's a bit noisy for about 30 seconds um, and then it's got really quiet now. Oh, I just absolutely love this white flashing light. It's perfect. Let's move on to the temperature scores then. Now I'm using an i5-4690K overclocked at 4.5 gigahertz at just over, I think it's 1.225 volts um, is what I'm using for my um, voltages. Um, now I am running the fans at full speed and they are quite no noisy at full speed so maybe suggest changing them over for something else but I thought I'd just give it the full whack. Now the ambient temperature in my room is about 25 degrees at the moment because my ventilation in my house is just crap so it's horrible, I hate the summer. Um, so my idle temperatures um, at the moment are between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius, but we'll call it 35 because it should be the highest. Um, and then for moving on to gaming, I played Battlefield 1 for about two hours this morning. Um, and I was constantly just trying to keep my eye looking at obviously shooting everything, but then also on the temperature of my CPU. And it never went above 57 degrees Celsius. Now moving on to CPU benchmarks. Now Ida64 generally doesn't um, send the temperatures as high and this shows with the cooler with the max temperature of 60 degrees celsius from ida 64 but moving on to prime 95 with the torture test again never went over 75 degrees celsius which might sound very high but you will hardly ever push your cpu to the limits of prime 95 and that's why it's used as a benchmark so 75 degrees is perfect so how do those scores compare obviously i don't keep loads of um um, charts and scores and everything but they are very very good temperature scores now you will not get a temperature score that compares as good to an air cooler at this price you would probably struggle to find a 60 70 pound air cooler that performs as good as its closely cooler in fact this cpu cooler performs as good as any other 240 cpu cooler and i imagine if you did upgrade the thermal paste and maybe pair it with some notches those scores would get even better so final thoughts on it well, to be fair, you know, I was looking for this whole thing thinking there's got to be something wrong with it. Like, how can it be this price? And it's got so many things that I love about it. Um, it's got that bracket. I love the little clips. When I looked at all the brackets and stuff, I was like, God, there's loads of stuff in it. It looks really hard to install. But it's got those little black clips that I put on in the installation, which means the screws don't pop out the back. So you can mount it standing up. That's absolutely perfect. The included four fan um, PWM control is great. Although I would mention that, um, like I said about the Cossier, they only actually include enough screws to put the two fans on, so you will need to order some more M3 screws. So that's absolutely great. Um, the Bionic um, light is perfect as well, and if you like blue light fans, that's fine, but I think you're sort of selling yourself short when you put coloured fans with products, because someone might not buy it, especially if your budget was only £40 anyway in the first place. So yeah, that's absolutely fantastic, but the only thing that I can say is not very good about it. There's one thing that really isn't very good about it, and that is the length of the tubing. The tubing is not that long. As you could already see when I installed it, it was already quite tight in a case this size. So if you wanted to front mount it, in a case it's got a big cage on the front, it won't go. This, I think, has been designed, and even by all of Deep Cool's photos that they have online, it's designed to be a top-mounted radiator. Um, you probably would get it in a case a little bit bigger than this if you turn the block around and have the tubes facing by the ram. But um, yeah, so all in all, I'm... I absolutely love this product. I think I'm going to buy a couple more to go in other systems and maybe for my test bench. Um, and I think you should definitely go out and buy one. So if you like this video, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why. Um, and I'll see you guys all really soon.